Bearing shipping containers is easy, right? Dig a hole, drop them in, and slap some dirt on it. Yeah, it's not quite that simple. You gotta be careful. It could end up being your metal coffin and not your savior. Thankfully, we have Ron, the expert, who we can draw on all of his wisdom and experiences. And a refund to cover it, too. Which will save us three rounds of prototyping. At the end of this video, we're gonna show off the system that we developed to bury shipping containers into the side of the hill, off the grid, with no power connected. That's gonna control all the groundwater. Let's see what Ron has to say about it. I have seen quite a few people take these and put them in the side of a hill and do what's called a berm on top of it. So I've done a, quite a few of those. They got a mountain right there. They just carve it out, put it in, and it's a cheap way to do a bunker. Yeah, this is a lot less expensive than the shelters I make, that's for sure. Ron, here we have some exterior studding brackets, and so we have so many people that just say they want a container because they are very safe and secure above ground and rodent proof and wind and water tight, but the uh, municipality or their neighbors don't want them to have a shipping container. So a lot of times they just want to dress it up a little bit, maybe side it the same as their home. But another thing here, once we installed these, we kind of discovered we could go up even further with like 16 foot two by sixes or whatever and actually build like a little roof yeah a little hunting shack up top there and then park your your argo inside here i'd like to show you our strut line system really quick all right. uh, there's no welding here at all we're doing this whole office not a speck of welding you go anywhere in the southern united states everyone's so it's welding riveted everywhere. or screwed in let's go inside are you are you penetrating is that a tubing that's a hollow rec, or square tube okay so you're not creating a leak spot no okay that's good you and then, that out and then at the bottom we just go through the wood floor and we don't go all the way through so we have so it's pretty that's pretty stiff yeah strut channel. Well, that's, okay that'll handle 1500 pounds are you trying to put any blocks between here spray and there? Foam. Huh? Spray foam. It's a spray foam? And we can get that engineered. So with this right here, yeah. in every corrugation, yeah. we've had it engineered for blast resistance. So to handle X yeah. amount of PSI of blast at X amount of feet away. I'm trying to figure out if this will hold back the earth. Now you keep in mind, engineered rock will compact. Yeah. So it's not going to put the same stress on the walls as earth would because earth's going to get wet it's gonna get heavy and it's gonna to wanna to push it in. Where an engineered rock, when it's compacted, will stay stiff and it doesn't move. With the spray foam would be your first line of defense. And then on the outside, if you did the wood stud brackets and spray foam, it's only 1.6 millimeters thick. It's only 16 gauge metal, not your quarter yeah. inch like you have. Yeah, I know that. So what is the finished inside dimension? Seven feet then? Seven and two. Seven feet two? And this is designed to put, add what, drywall or something? Uh, we use a PVC reline wall panel. It's a really nice white car wash panel. You so you can pressure wash it. You've done a really good job. I've never seen nothing like this. An issue we have here is with the floor structure. What do you do underneath there? And how do you deal with backfilling the dirt underneath those, those beams or channels that are under there? Well, uh, we use an engineered rock. And then what we do is we do a layer of engineered rock that acts as a natural French drain. And then we'll put a 12 inch galvanized corrugated pipe with a sump dump down the bottom. So if you have groundwater like around a pond like this, you can pull the water out. So it's no different like these basements in Canada. Yeah. You know, I have a house here and uh, I have a sump pump down in my basement, which is also bedrooms now, but if I didn't have it, it would flood every now and then. So Ron mentions using a galvanized pipe as a sump pit and he puts a pump down there. And this is basically it. At our new site, we use this for dewatering. It's a 24 inch, he says 12, and he puts a sump pump in there. This is basically what he's talking about right here. Come over here, check it out. You can see water in it. One thought maybe we had is remove all the wood floor, set it down in engineered rock, and then pour concrete in there after. I've seen people pour concrete, remove the floor and pour concrete. You just gotta make sure that you waterproof it if you do that, but that is absolutely not a bad idea to remove the floor and put concrete in there. Another thing that we maybe conceptualized is if we installed this and spray foamed it with two inches of two pound closed cell uh, spray foam and then plywood it, we can with a concrete pumper truck come and fill the cavities just like a basement. There you and go. now we have this concrete. And it's hardened too. Hard and uh, like three quarter inch, say treated plywood and whether we tar that yet or whatever. At bare minimum, I think that this now will at least withstand the sideways pressure uh, like of a basement, right? Like we could bury it four or six feet in the ground and we're probably not gonna collapse. 
somebody texted me today. It's like, how far in the water can your bunker go? It's like, it's not a submarine, okay? Yeah. It's a bunker. So if water comes over the top, it will flood. Hydrostatic pressure never sleeps. Yeah. It never sleeps. It's going to work 24 hours a day, and it's always going to want to push. And it's going to want to push until it can cause rust and push through the rust and then start leaking in. It will start off as drip 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 they'll become a little stream and next thing you know it's streaming out and it'll flood something so you just got to make sure that you waterproof it because yeah. I, I i've had it happen to me i've been doing these bunkers for like um what 12 13 years i've seen bunkers get water in them and it's sickening to see that happen that's why you change and you adapt and you listen and you learn and you don't do things and that's why i put all my experiences both good and bad on youtube so i can help people when they do it themselves because i sell the air systems i sell the doors for do-it-yourself bunkers whether it be made of concrete of a shipping container or whatever it may be what do you guys do for uh, engineering and for permitting processes well in texas you don't need a permit in most of the usa you don't need a permit for shelters because it's an unregulated industry i'm trying to make some changes to that because there's got to be some guidelines that people follow so there's organizations that are forming and I'll, I'll be a member of one that's coming out, but it basically holds us to a standard in regulations that meets or exceeds both Israeli and Swiss standards. Just because we don't, don't have it in the USA doesn't mean we can't abide by it or even make it better. Another thing about regulation is uh, that's actually happening in our industry as well for container modifications, but the people that are writing the codes, so they're doing it the same way I did it 12 years ago and it's the wrong way. They're just uh, using torches, cutting holes, and welding in HSS. We're engineering everything, laser cut, folded, all pre-processed metal. We do full structural, double wide shipping containers, double long shipping containers such as this, not an inch of weld at all. Just perfectly flawlessly engineered, built like an airplane or an ambulance, right? And so it would suck if we were just coded right out of our industry, right? So what I do like about regulation for shipping containers is that they want us all to install a container base structure plate on the doors of shipping containers. And that is something I can stand behind and that is something I'm going to adopt here at the Container Guy. And where these become useful is we like to put a model and a serial number on every container, but we can also do other things like when we get an Intertech electrical inspection or if we're doing structural tests. And once our system passes that test, we can make a plate that says that even if it's not buried underground, you're gonna have something that protects you in a storm. Any shelter is better than no shelter. And one of these things cost about $4,000. A shelter the same size made by me with the stairs and the hatch and everything inside turnkey is about 80,000, okay? So you could buy this for 4,000, buy the air system for about 8,800, get the door for about 4,500, do it yourself and be in the shelter, you could be in everything for around $20,000, $25,000 and have a DIY shelter. There's nothing wrong with that. Future Channing here. Before we show you our system, I just wanna say so many people have tried this and failed. You can't just go and buy a container, bury it and expect it to work. It will fail. You need to both structurally reinforce the interior and the exterior. And if you do both of those and if either one of them were able to support the earth that's on top of it, then if one system fails, you're still safe. Another thing is waterproofing. You're gonna want a full waterproof membrane around this thing. As Ron says, hydrostatic pressure never sleeps. So you won't get any premature corrosion, which is gonna cause catastrophic failure. So here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for, how to bury a shipping container into the side of the hill. Let's watch it together. So first off, you excavate your hole and you lay out one inch engineered rock. We have our container pads that you can put under the four corners and that's gonna keep everything up off the ground and give you an airspace underneath the channels. We could come in here and actually spray foam ahead of time, but you're only gonna want your spray foam contractor there once. So let's forget about that. Let's remove the foam, let's close up the doors and let's deal with the outside, the structure of this container. We have our exterior studding brackets, which we'd install that prior to a bitumen coating to keep everything sealed up. And then we have our framing system with these exterior studding brackets that will be the exoskeleton for all of this and resist the weight of the earth pushing back on this. We'll also utilize plywood to keep everything, all your framing together, just like a normal sheeting of a house and then composite board. So right here we have what we use as a KWP composite board and that stuff 
resist mold, mildew, moisture, and corroding. Let's get back to the animation. So if we fill everything up with gravel and then foam all the way around it, so you can actually use pea gravel or some sort of cementitious layer inside of that prior to insulating everything, or you can use concrete. Concrete's definitely very durable. It's gonna give you that uh, structure, but the spray foam being on the outside of that now gives you that thermal mass inside of your insulated envelope. And so for electrical installations where you did have a heat pump or something sitting outside, you can actually utilize that thermal mass to help control the climate inside of the shipping container. And so while your spray foam contractor is at site now, this is the time with your floorboards removed, you spray foam around the whole exterior envelope and you also spray foam inside the channels and you make sure that that foam goes underneath the bottom channel all the way around the container and gives you that perfect bathtub that Rom talks about. So here now you can actually pour concrete on the inside or we can just replace the existing plywood flooring which is nice, it saves you a bit of time and money. And, and here, if you use pea gravel underneath, if you use pea, pea gravel inside the framing system and you put your plywood floor back in, you actually didn't need concrete at all, which is crazy. We thought for sure we'd need concrete in this system. And you can see down here along the bottom, that spray foam is all exposed. And uh, basically it's only the front end here that's going to be exposed to the elements once this thing's all buried. We have our container door flashing kits that get installed on the container doors. That allows us to spray foam insulate and plywood line the container doors. That'll help you control the, the climate inside of here. And if you're definitely, if you're planning on trying to make it a wine cellar or something and keep it at a consistent temperature all year long. Super important part of this right here is weeping tile. This is super common here in Canada where we have basements and our basements are below the frost line. We need to redirect that water to a sump basin and then pump that out. Or if you have slope, you can redirect the water and then just continue that slope down the hill. But you need to cover all that with an engineered rock and an original version of figuring out how we're gonna do this. For some reason, we had the walls coming uh, perpendicular or I guess parallel with the, the sides of the container straight out. Well, that's not structural and those are prone to caving in. So coming out at a 45 degree angle and originally we're, well, how do you form that? I don't know, but it was also out of concrete and we needed a concrete truck to do that. So if you buy these concrete blocks, we hypothesize that you could stack them up and that will be your retaining wall of the dirt to bring you from that higher ground level that's above the shipping container down to your lower shelf out here. So if you see this now, we'll just let our grass grow back, paint it camel so it blends in and uh, spread out some rock or whatever you want in the front of the shipping container. Install some vents if you wanna passive ventilate this. We have lock boxes to add the security. So there you have it. That is pretty much how we figure we can bury a shipping container into the side of the hill with no power. But we don't only hypothesize how to do this. We are going to do this. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and follow us along. This springtime, we're gonna get at her. We're gonna show you if it actually works in real life. Hope you learned something.